All right, so welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this session of the course, we'll be trying to see how to build something very interesting with Streamlight. So we'll be using Streamlight to build a bioinformatics app, and we'll be combining all that you have learned so far to build this simple app for bioinformatics, right? Very interesting. So this is something simple as a side stuff that you can do with Streamlight. I can change the background of this to any different color. So in case I want to be red, I can also do the same thing. I'm going to change it to red. I can also change the color here to, let's say, black then it's going to change it to that particular color right something very simple something very nice so this app is for bioinformatics in which we'll be trying to see how to give it a dna sequence that's going to do something very simple about it right so let's come back to the side menu here then from here i can just go to the dna sequence and we have to see the various things can do with it so let's close it up so from here i can drop in any fast file fast file so let's copy it and have some fast files here this is for COVID. so i can just paste it here right if i drag it and drag and drop it here it's going to load it then give us the description of it very interesting the id and the description and i can also get a sequence right in case i want to get the entire sequence or the different nucleotide very simple very nice then i can also come back down here to check for the nucleotide frequency to the number of adenine thymine guanine and cytosine in our dna then I can also change and do a simple plot. If I go with plot frequency, I can plot the frequency of the nucleotide. It's going to give us a very nice plot. Very interesting, right? So this is the plot that's given to us. In case I want to change the color of maybe adenine or color of guanine, I can come back to the same place here. And let's change the color to, let's say, I want to change to blue, deep blue. I'm going to change that particular color for us. So if I go back and I go with the plot frequency again, you can see that now it is giving us that particular color, right? Which we changed very interesting very simple that is something very cool can do you can also change the color for the guanine in case you want it to be from a different color let's say i want it to be green i can also do the same thing right it's going to also going to change it and i can plot it it's going to give us that color that we changed for very interesting right very cool now let's see how to some other stuff you can also get the dna composition for the gc count and then the at count for that particular sequence that you place there then you can also want to check for the the frequency of a particular type of nucleotide so let's say g i go with g i'm going to count the number of g within our nucleotide and give us our result right so this is the amount of g there which is similar to what we had here right very interesting now let's see some other stuff you can also do i can also check from here and transcribe it in case i want to transcribe the amino acid i want to transcribe it perfectly for us so this is a tra transcribed mrna right very interesting i can also translate it from from the dna to an amino acid or amino acid anyhow you see it very interesting together with the stop codon then also i can come back and then get the amino acid frequency plus it's a very simple plot that you can also do this is going to be not just a plot but the frequency of the individual amino acids there right then i can also check for the most common right the top common so these are the top common ones there these are the top common there and then i can also check for the most common amino acids within Yes, let's say the first five, the top five. So lysine, serine, and the stop codon, and then these ones, right? So these are the most common. Together with the result, that's after that's been translated. Then I can also do a simple plot for the frequency, which is going to be very interesting, right? So you can add a lot of features to it, but this is something very simple, very simple with all the different amino acids. Then I can change the color of this black one. In case I want to change, I can also you can do it for all of them, but I just made it for something very simple right so that you can see that you can it's possible right very interesting so that just change the color from this to red right you can also do a simple pie plot which is not that nice but you just see it and later we can work on it right so this is a simple pie plot which which is not that nice but at least we will manage <laughs> okay so where is it it's coming 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 based on the sequence that you supply there perfect so this is the plot it's not that nice but you have to modify it right so we may take this one out but you have to modify it in the future that is something very simple that we have done now let's see some other stuff you can also do right so in case i also want to get a full amino acid name i can also come back to this place that's going to translate the entire stuff to the three letter word or to the full letter word right very simple very cool so we are trying to apply all that you have learned to build this simple app now i can come back to the sidebar here then i can go back to the dot plot for multiple sequence in case i have two different sequence and to generate the dot plot for them i can also come back to this place and then from here i can drop 
it, uh, I have my COVID here. I can also drop another one, my second faster file. So let's drop that one here. So let's use, let's say, number six, right? I have a lot here. So let's use, mm, right? It's, you can use any. Right? So let's pick, let's say, five. Oh, right. I don't know what it is, but let's put it there. Perfect. So the first one, see, it seems that they're almost the same. So let's change it to something different. So let's pick the SAS one, right? Hopefully it is SAS. It's going to put it there. Perfect, right? So these are two different stuff. So, yeah, right? Two, these are two different stuff. So now we have two different fast e files, two different C DNA sequence. So I can do a simple dot plot and I can set the limit. So in case I want to compare the first 50 nucleotide or the first 100 nucleotide. So let's compare the first 100 nucleotide. Then from that, I can just move on and create the dot plots by clicking on dot plot x to generate a very simple dot plot using the first 100 nucleotides for both sequences, right? Taking some time for it to run. Perfect, so it's very, very nice. <laughs> so very nice. You can see that from here, you can see that there's an alignment here, right? This particular place, but the rest, they are not. That's something very simple that you'll be trying to build in this tutorial. You can also do more in case you also set, want to set it to, let's say, the first 10 or the first 50, anyhow you want it to be, you can also do the same thing. Now let's check how to build this symbol up from scratch. So these are the, the main features there, right? So let's see how to build this symbol up. We just start from scratch. So I'll just open this one and close this one here. Then you start everything from scratch. So I'll just come back here, close what was running. Then we can start. So I'm just going to create another folder. So this is going to be mkdl. Let's go to my let's let's get out of this space and then create another one. So mkdl. I don't know what I can see it well. I'll call it as my bio info info app something like that, right? So now we have created this. So if I go back to my bio info app, there's nothing there. Very interesting. And I can create a file called app.py. Then from here, I can open it. So let's open it to Sublime. We open a particular folder with Sublime, and then you start working on it. So let me close the one that we put in. So let's switch from this place. Right, perfect. So in case you don't have Streamlight and you want to install it, just go with pip install Streamlight. Is that the package you are using? So you are using Streamlight, you are using Bio Python to help us with our sequence analysis and then we're also using neat by it's similar to by python which is the one that we built which can be also used for help us to do some interesting stuff so, so these are the main stuff we'll be doing and then we also need math plot so that in case you don't have it so this is the busy stuff that we need right so streamlight by python need bio and then math plot and you also need numpy of course you need numpy to help us with our plot for the dot plot so let's start working with it I'm just going to go back. We have opened it, so let's check it out. So I've opened it here. So this is what we have, right? So we'll be starting from first. So I'm just going to import Streamlight as ST, the first thing that we need. So that is all that we need to help us with that, right? Perfect. Then I'm just going to go with my main, which is going to be for simple bioinformatic app. So let's go to a simple bioinformatic this is my fist there. <laughs> okay, something very simple. And then for me, let's go to st dot subheader. You can just put title there in case you want it to be title. Then I'll just go straight away with my simple bio informatics app. That's all. Then I have to close this entire stuff with my if main. Something very simple, right? Now let's first of all create our choices or menu. Let's go to this menu. Then the menu is going to have three different stuff. We have our menu for we have our menu which is going to be for the simple intro, which we can we can skip. We have another one for the DNA sequence, so uh, DNA sequence. Then another one for the dot plot, right? Dot plot, right? And the final one is going to be our about. Very interesting. And I can just go back to this flip, same place that I have and go with ST. Let's go to my choices st.sidebar.select box and I'll pass in whatever I want to do so I'm going to pass in my select activity activity right. whatever text you want to do 
that I'll just pass in my menu. Very simple. So let's see this done. So after that, I'm just going to go with a simple condition. So if my choice is equal to intro, do the intro. So st dot subheader go to intro right to bio bio informatics right that is something simple so i'll go with my else if my choice is equal to dna sequence i want to do do the same so so this is going to be for my dna sequence analysis right something very simple so these are the main stuff there so let me repeat this thing to save us time so come back to the same place here right and then here so this is going to be for our dot plot if it is dot plot dot plot i want to tell us that we are doing a dot plot for them right so so generate dot plot for two sequences two sequences right very interesting then the last one is going to be for about which is something very simple about about the app so about let's save it right so that's all that we need right very interesting and very simple now i can just come back and then i can also make this one else in case you want but let's make it like that else if make it like else without the choice right but let's make it else if very interesting something very simple now let's see how to run this simple app that we have done so i'll come back to my terminal and this is where the app is i can just create my stream light run then i'll pass in the app so run with app so this app is referring to the file here is referring to the one that our code is on so by default it's going to use your default browser to open on a particular port or you can copy the this particular url right into your phone or into your, your browser that's going to work so let's paste it here so i paste it here it's going to work perfectly for us so let me bring myself down so it's giving us an error because we made an, a mistake somewhere which is very interesting so i'll just come back here then let's check where we made a mistake so we have if choice is this the seven as a, is a choice right so else if choice so let's check it out at the sequence so let's create it out you see the mistake we are making right it's supposed to be equal to perfect right it's going to work perfectly for us so that is something very simple it will automatically going to tell you the error so let's go it always run then it's going to give us simple by informatics so i go to the side by here now you have my app so have the intro we have the dna sequence it's going to give us the dna sequence option right everything is working as expected now let's see how to work on the dna sequence you can actually create functions and put the functions there but let's make it simple right so I'll just come back to the same place that we have here we'll not be doing the intro now we'll do it later so let's start with the dna sequence itself i'm just going to go with this option so I just come back to the same place and go with my, let's call it as my uh, file. So we'll be given a particular file that will be storing the stuff there. So let's go sequence file, which is going to take the st dot file uploader, right? You're using the uploader to help us with that file uploader. Then I'll pass in some questions. So let's call it as upload first a file, right? So I'm going to give it the particular file format. So the type of file format there. Right, so the type of file form let me expand this one here so this is going to be the type which is going to take a list of the various files types so we have first a file there's also fa fa right fe file then let's go with let's say gb file too right and also take a test file but let's restrict it to these two you can also add gb in case you also want to support gb format but let's go with first a file so either faster fe right and then let's add tst because some files can also be tst file that's uh fast a files very interesting that is all then now from here i can just t see that if my sec file is not none if it's not equal to none i want you to do something so i want you to read a particular file so i'll be importing the package to help us read it which is going to be reading bio python to help us so it's going to be from bio.sec 
you can yes you can use the sequence utilities to help us with that no the sequence are you to help us with that so it's going to be from bio dot sec import sec that is in case you want to create our own sequence one but i don't think we're creating our sequence but let's import it maybe you use it later so from bio then you will be important sec io these are the main stuff you'll be doing right you'll be importing these two stuff there then let's also import collection so from collection import counter to help us with our frequency then also we are going to be importing matplotlib so it's going to be our data base packages it's going to be import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt then we also import matplotlib to help us set our back, back end for our plot which is going to be matplot matplot.use we are using you can use T-H-E-O but you can use A-G-O T-K T-K-G right but let's use the A-G format that's what I mean right something very simple something very cool so we have gotten something simple that we can be using so let's save this one now let's come back and read our file so if my sec file is not none I want you to be able to open the file and read our sequence for us so let's create a DNA record which is going to be used to open our file right so we're going to go with my simple sec IU format so sec IU we had our sec IU so we can use the sec IU read to help us with that so sec IU dot read then I'll pass in my sec file so sequence file that is all that we need right then I also supply the format which is first a format very interesting so that is how to read the file now if I go back with st dot write DNA record let's save it and come back here and check what our app is now so it's giving us an error collection is supposed to be collections so from collections it's going to give us a lot of uh, we are making a lot of mistakes so that you see how to fix it in case you are doing it so everything is working perfectly so now I can go with the browse files then I can select I can select a particular sequence so let's select this sequence first of all right then it's going to load it perfectly for us and give us the result so this is the result it's giving to us right very interesting so that means our app is working we can upload a file and it's working perfectly well very nice now let's try and see whether if I, we apply a different file format it's going to work so let's apply another file format right let's say this tst file because you also have supported tst let's see whether to work so that it's not working right so that means that you have to take a tst file from that because that tst file is not the best format it can be anything right so let's take that one out very interesting so we have made a restriction to only fast a and a faster file right very nice now let's move on to some other stuff you can also do so be adding the various stuff so let me load my sequence you can use this one or you can drop dra drag drag and drop it there so let's load this right let's give us our result and let's make it better right so this is for ebola now let's make it better and add some details to it right so we're going to be restricting it so let's go to my details so with st dot radio then from here i'll just give it as my say, my details right details so i'm going to give the person the option of selecting two two stuff which is going to be this so i want the person to either choose description description or the dna sequence itself right sequence right that's the main, main stuff the person can choose so i'm going to tell the person that if the details is equal to description right then i want you to get only the description from it. it's going to be st dot right then dna record dot description so by now i hope you know most of these functions so it's going to bring it out so we have our stuff here right but it's not giving us in the best format that we want we have to correct this one and make it nicer so we have to change it right it's supposed to be this option perfect right that's going to work perfectly for us so we have our description we also have our sequence right so you can just choose which one you want now let's go back and add that one so let's see else if my details is equal to the sequence right let's go to sequence now i can just come back to sd dot right then i'll pass in my stuff dna record dot sec for the sequence right perfect so if i run it back again 
you can just see how it is working perfectly well so let's go back from the intro to the sidebar in which we're just going to the dna sequence option then from here we can see what it's working right everything is working as expected let me bring myself here right perfect so that is something very nice so it's giving us our sequence if i choose a sequence it's going to give all our seconds for us so i can take off this one because we don't need it anymore so this is going to go off right so it's at least it is clean right very nice and very simple okay so let's move on to the other stuff you can also do so we just come back down here and let's see what we do so i'm just going to create my dna sequence here right i can also create it here so that at least we use it so i can call it as my dna sequence which is going to be this option my DNA record dot set right. I'm creating a variable called DNA sequence, which will be using to do anything that we want to do. Then from here, I can just come back to the same place and then specify what we want to do. So let's call this. This is going to be for our nucleotide frequencies, right? So let's go just dot subheader. Then let's call this nucleotide frequencies. The frequency, simple. Very nice. Then from here, let's check it out. This is going to be very simple. So we have my DNA, we create a variable called DNA frequency. Then I'll use a counter to help us with that. So that's why we imported counter from above. We imported counter from here. So this is the counter that we imported. And we are using this counter to help us with that. So counter, and I'll pass in my DNA sequence. Perfect. So it's going to create a dictionary for that. Now I can view it. So st dot write and DNA frequency right so since it's coming as a dictionary i can actually use json to help us with that right but let's use the normal one right and let's see what we have done so far so if i come back here so let's go with the description and now you see that we have it in a very nice format for us right everything has been calculated for us now i can actually plot this one right out so let's plot it out so to plot it out we can just go with st dot st dot let's call it as if st dot button go to plot frequency right if that is the case i want you to plot so the simplest plot just go with plt dot bar as we did earlier on then i'll pass in the dna frequency dot keys for the first axis and then dna frequency dot values right very interesting and because we have already imported my plot lib we are using plt i can just go with st dot pi plot this is from streamline to allow us to, to plot it Going to plot it in a very nice format so if i click on this plot frequency you can see it's working perfectly well very interesting right so that generated a, a simple plot for us now we have to add some beautification to it so that is why we'll be using a new feature for the color picker so i'll just come back to the same place that we had and then i'll pick the particular feature so we'll be just going with something like my adenine color let me bring it to the top it's going to be st dot beta color picker right and from here i can specify the particular color i want so let's call it say pick so adenine color right then i can just give it a default color so if i save this one now it's we are going to see the color picker coming here right and we can actually select it up but to be able to add this color to our plot we just have to come back to let's add another one let me expand this one as I expand this one and then let's call this one as my guanine. So we have adenine and then guanine, right? Guanine color, then let's change this one to guanine. So G guanine, right? Very interesting. Only just you can add more to it in case you want, but let's make it very simple. Then from here, I'm going to equate this one to our bar list, right? Our plot bar list. Then I can going to collect this entire stuff into a list something with a list that i can actually index right index and then get it so let's go to my bar list so this is the first one come back to this so bar list right the first value which is zero so zero dot set color and i'll pass in my color that i want this is my adenine color so let's check it out so if i save it now and let's come back here so what you have done perfect so we have our guanine our and adenine now let's change this one from black to red then let's click on the plot frequency 
we're going to plot it in a very nice format for us voila so it's working right so the it's giving us this particular c right the reason given this c is that we are supposed to make sure that it is in the right format otherwise to keep us giving us error right so we have seen that it's working right so but it gives us a side sync right so we have to make sure that we are in the right position so that means that i can also add more to it so let's copy this one here so we have one we have two we have three right in case i want to do it for all of them we have one two three right and then here i can also do the same thing as we did so this is going to be this one this let's in case i want to add all the colors right so this is going to be for my let's call this site using right timing rather timing right 80 and then this is going to be for site using Cytosin. Cytosin or cytosin? <laughs> I forgot it. Okay. So this will be for the timing. And this is going to be for the guanine. And the last one is going to be for cytosin. Cytosin. Right. So if I save it now and I come back here. Now we see that we have four different colors. So I can actually change the color. Right. So let's change this one to, let's say, a different color in case I want to make it blue or something. So one eye, then I can choose blue. Then I can plot. So if I plot, I'm going to start. You have three different colors: red, blue, then that. Right, perfect. So, but the issue we are having here now is it is not able to pair up all. So what I will do is that this is C, right? So C is zero. So we'll just go back to here. C is zero. So we have to make sure that this is now zero. So let's go this one to zero right and then g is the second one so g is going to be one right so it is coming from the other way around then a is three so that means it's going to be two no yeah no it's going to be yeah correct two and then the last one is going to be and then i and now it's going to be three I hope everything is correct. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's three. This is two. Right. See what you are doing. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So everything is working. You see that the color is perfectly well. Very simple and very nice. Now, in case I want to change the color for adenine, I can also click on this one and choose, let's say, purple or fuchsia. Then click on plot. You can see then it's going to change for the adenine for us now perfect everything is working as expected right very nice and very cool so that is how to just do a simple plot using the new feature now let's move on to some other aspect of the app so we'll be doing the dna composition which is going to be this so let's go back to this option it's going to be the dna composition right so we can just go back to the same place call it as my sd dot sub header and i call it as dna composition right which includes the composition the G, C, and then the A, T count. So here is going to be something like this. So let's call this one as my, we have already, let's call it as a GC score. So GC score. Then from here, we can use any of the packages above to help us get the GC score, or we can use any of them. So let's use NitBio to help us with that. So we'll be using NitBio. You can use BioSec to help you with that. You can use BioPython to help you with that, but let's use NitBio. Right. So it's going to be from let's import it bio right dot sec sec utils as util right to help us utils so using need bio to help us with that so it's giving us an error yes we correct it then from here i can just go to utils dot gc content and i'm passing my dna so it's going to be my part of a string then dna sequence right if I save it now, it's going to work perfectly. Then I can just print it out, right? So this is going to be for the GC count. We also have for the AT score. It's going to be details dot AT score. So this details is coming from NitBio. Can use any package. Can use any of them. It's going to work. Now let's print it out. It's going to be my ST dot right we can use 
a json format to help us with this let's create a dictionary and let's call this one as let's say uh, gc count to gc content see i was doing this <laughs> i was thinking content right it's going to be a dictionary which takes a gc score then do another one for the rest which is going to be for the 80 score 80 content which will be for the 80 score so let's save it and see what you have done so far so it's giving us an error 80 score is not defined no attribute 80 score right oh see what you did <laughs> it's 80 content we are actually making mistakes and you're going to see it right i'm not going to edit anything <laughs> okay so it's working perfectly i can also use json in case i want instead of the right i can also use json so going to work right either right or the json because this is the format of a json and it's working perfectly very nice so we are done with the dna composition now let's move on to some other stuff you can also add to our app now it would be nice if the person can select a particular nucleotide and get the count so let's add that one so that's going to be our nucleotide nucleotide count right in case the person want to find a nucleotide count it's going to be my something like this st dot let's make it empty count then you use the st dot test input then so let's tell the person to enter nucleotide here here something like that right then I can now tell the person to type nucleotide alphabet something like that right simple now from here I can now use the count that you have been doing to find out the particular nucleotide so it's going to be sta dot right then I'll just say that the number so the number of the particular nucleotide that the person supplied is right as the first one then there's going to be this option dot format dot format so i'm passing the entity count that's what the person search for then i'm going to use the same thing to help us with that so it's going to be in my string for the dna sequence that you had then i'll just go with dot count this is a string function which is going to be my empty count. So if I save it and let's check and see what we have done so far. So it's giving us an error here. Let's check it out. So perfect. Do it. So no more errors. Everything is working as expected. So if I close it. Now we can see that you can type the nucleotide alphabet here, which is too long. But if I pass in G, it's going to bring it up perfectly fast. So the number of G nucleotide that is going on is this amount, which is the same thing as we had for here, right? Very interesting. So we are done with some basic features about the DNA composition, about the number of nucleotides, and then about the nucleotide frequency. Now let's move on to. You can also do the same thing for the top. The top uh, amino acids there, right? You can also do the same. So let's go just see top most common amino acid but before we do that you have to translate it so let's go back and create another option to translate it is going to be for protein synthesis protein synthesis which takes two steps so the first one is going to be for transcription and then translation right so let's go with st dot subheader and let's call this protein synthesis and from here i can just go with my simple button we can use a button we can use a checkbox let's use if st dot checkbox let's use a checkbox checkbox then from here i'll pass in the particular stuff i want so let's say i want to do first one is transcription right transcription right then from here i'll just go with the something like st dot right and i'll pass in the dna that I had so DNA sequence dot transcribe. This is coming from BioPython. I'm going to transcribe it and give us our result. If I come back here, let's come back here. I said now we have our protein synthesis option. If I click on the 
transcription it's going to transcribe the entire stuff for us very nice right you can also do the same thing for the next which is going to be for translation copy this one and repeat it for the translation right so we have for translation you can also do for complement in case you also want to do complement so this is going to be for translation so translation then this will be for translation translate right translate it into an amino acid right so we have one for transcription we have one for translation so let's correct this one from let's call this complement right which is something that it, it's not part of the app initial app, but we are adding it anyway so it's going to add it to it perfectly for us i hope you can hear me <laughs> okay it's running so we have our translation if i click on the translation I'm going to convert everything into amino acid very interesting then i can do the same thing for the complement I'm going to give us the complement right very simple very nice so this thing that we are doing as we can also make it else if right else if it's still going to work perfect very nice now let's we have gotten the transcription translation and complement we can also do some other stuff like plotting them out right so what i will do is i'll come back to this place and create a p1 for the protein then i'll call it as my dna sequence dot translate because we're using it to help us to get the frequency of the amino acids there right so i can just come back so i've gotten the translation transcription complement we can also add one to the else if st dot checkbox which i'll call it let's say a uh, amino acid frequency so AA frequency for amino acids then I can just use the same thing that we did so using counter we can use counter to help us with that so that's the case it's going to be my AA frequency A stands for amino acid then from here I just go with the counter pass in my protein which is can be a string so let's make it a string format first then P1 So now I can come back and then go with st dot right the a frequency if I save it it's going to calculate the frequency of the amino acid there and give it to us in a very simple format so let's uncomment the comments uncomment the complement out <laughs> okay so perfect so if I come back here it's going to generate it perfectly fast using a counter very nice right so we have our frequency we can actually plot this one too so let's do that one so this is going to be this copy this one here Right, because you want to plot it, we can put this above here and just call it here. So that we can it's as accessible even beyond this scope. Right, so this perfect for this one and then for the counter perfect. Mm, did we make a mistake here? Yeah. Perfect. So let's change this one to the plot. So this going to be plot a frequency is you want to plot the frequency then you use what you did above to help us with that so I'll go back to the top I'll go back to this place here right you remember that you had something like this to do the plot so I'll use the same plot to help us because it's almost going to be the same thing let's copy this one here come back down here right so the only difference here is that you'll be changing this one from DNA to A frequency a frequency right then we need to give it a particular color so let's just add one color to it because there are 20 different amino acids and we cannot be able to create that for every one of them so what i'll do is that i'll come back here right then let's call this one as a color right For just any of them something like that right you can change it as you wish it to be perfect so now this is going to be for the a color above this can be zero but we are setting it as 
see this thing that we have done we can also place it inside not just the bar but to affect the entire stuff right you can also do the same thing not just for that one right something like that so in, in case you want to use the color to affect everything you just have to supply the color here right that is how to do that but let's use the simple one so i'll save this one here now just go with st dot pi plot to generate the plots let's save it and let's go back and check what you have done so let's take off the frequency so let's come back here let's let me expand it let me take myself off <laughs> for now okay so we have it here so in case i want to ch check for the plot right for the particular plot it's going to be plot a frequency then we can pick an amino acid color so it's tell it that's giving us the color right so this is color the color that we have right so i can change the color from this to a different color but as i said you can also apply the color to each and every one of them in case you want to do that you can also do the same thing or you can apply the color to the entire stuff right by changing it here so let's try that one if it's going to work because most of these colors are usually rgb color so if i go with my a color so let's see whether it will work let's go to color is equal to this right pivot so we take off this then we will take off copy this one here is another option they are trying to do and let's see check it out whether it work hopefully it works if it doesn't work <laughs> then you have to try another one because mostly that one it, it's working perfectly right so i can change that color for the entire stuff to let's say green or blue and changing it perfectly for us so that is something very cool we can do with it right very very cool <laughs> you can't even see the color we picked let's pick a better color so you can do it for each and every one of the bars or you can just do it for a singular stuff right all of them is going to work right that is something very cool we have done very nice now let's move on to the rest so we have seen how to create a plot for the frequency of the amino acids now let's see how to get the lightest for the amino acid right each and every one of them so this is going to be my else if st dot checkbox we are using checkbox for now which is more stable then let's see let's see if full amino acid name amino acid name so how do we do that so first of all we have to get let's call this my a name right then i'll just pass in the p that we translated above we are translated to amino acid but i have to strip off if i go with this option right and i go with st dot right a name if i go with the a name like this and let's check it out everything is working as expected but with the a name you're going to you're going to see that it's having it's having a what do we call it an asterisk which is for the stop codon right for us to be able to translate it into three letter word or full name we have to make sure that we remove out we take out that particular stuff there so if i go to the full amin amino acid name it's that is there right but it's having this asterisk so we have to strip off this asterisk so I'll just come back to this in place and go with let's come back to this a string then i'll strip off let's replace so whenever I, we see our stereos we are replacing it with an empty space so if i save it now and i come back now the stereos is no more there so we can actually use it right perfect in a very nice format and then from here i can convert this entire stuff into the three letter word so that is going to be this so st dot right let's give some line between them then from here st dot right and i'll be using need by right to help us with that so it's going to be utils dot convert can you also use a uh, sectary from biopython to help you but let's use this one so convert three to one I'm converting one to three one two three and i'm passing my a name so i pass in the a name is going to convert this entire stuff into three letter ways for us very interesting right the actual three letter ways and i can also do the same thing for for the four letter ways for not for the four letter but for the full 
name so let's copy this one and get it here which is going to be get acid name so get acid name so get acid name it's going to give us the real name for them right so it's giving us string instance type not found so let's check where we made a mistake Right, the reason it's given us type not found is that we, for this to work, we need to supply three names, then we'll convert it from three to the full name. So I'll do the same thing that we have here, right? So I'll copy this. So what I'll do is I'll copy this one above, right? And I'll call this one as I say, A3. For that means it will be three names, perfect. Then I'll pass in this here, A3. You can name it anyhow you want, but I'm making it a three to help us know that it is three that is given to us. And I'll pass it here. And if I save it, it's going to work perfectly without giving us this arrow, this type arrow. So a three is not defined. So why is it not defined? Let's save it. It is A33, not A33. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Everything is working as expected. So we have seen how to convert everything, right? So it has converted everything into their real name. Very cool and very nice. So this is something very basic that you have built so far. Now let's move on to the other session on building for the dot plot. So I'll just come back here. So we have done for. We have done something for the DNA sequence. Now let's move on to the dot plot, right? So that's what we break it on now in the next session. Okay, so let's see how to work with the dot plot. So the dot plot, what we're doing is that we just come back here and then I'll paste in the function for the dot plot here, right? Then we start working on this. So this is a simple function that is going to help us with the dot plot. Very simple. And then we need numpy to help us with the dot plot also. So I'll just import numpy. So we import numpy mp so this code is part of the one of the tutorials that we explained so this a simple code to generate a dot plot right so now let's come back to here so i'm going to create another for the dot plot session this is going to be for the dot plot session let me expand it here then what we'll be doing that to we'll be creating two places to upload our dna sequence so i'll come back to the same thing that we did above this thing that we did here right we, we use this one to upload so i'll just copy this thing and duplicate it right so i'll just come back here so this is going to be for sequence one file so let's copy this so we have sequence one and sequence two right right so that at least we have one so upload first sequence file and then second first a file right perfect so i'm going to say that if my first a file one and sequence file two is not equal to none right or suppose we are not equal to none but it's not equal to none then this is going to be for the first one so i'll copy this one here duplicate it for the second one right, so we have one for the first file the person upload and then another one for the second file the person upload so it's going to be for two it's going to be for one so at least everything is working perfectly then now i can create another same thing that we did so copy this one here and then this is going to be for dna sequence one dna sequence two so two right so let's make it one and then here it will be two referring to these ones perfect so we are, we are done with it in a very nice format now i can also get the description for them so also do the same thing here but let's take off the sequence we don't need the sequence we really need the description to make sure that it is the same so i'll just copy this one okay let's use st dot write then this option to give us a line and st dot write dna record to dot description very interesting so we have one for record one the first file 
another one for record two right so if i save it now and i come back to what you have done so far so everything is working perfectly so here we have one so we generate those plots for two seconds upload first file upload second file so let's upload our first file so let's upload our seconds faster file for ebola perfect it's going to give us the description here so let's go to select the plot right so let's work on it so it's going to be this option i don't even think we need this right do we okay let's add it to it right else if details let's go to sequence then i'll just do the same thing so st dot right my dna record one dot sequence right okay so we can also do the same thing so let me copy this in here and then paste it here so this is going to be changed from this to sequence so let's save it and let's check what you have done so far so we have uploaded one then let's upload the second one so that means that it must always accept two so let's use mm, four hopefully four is not the same as perfect right so everything is working all of them are one one we can't compare one one we have to choose something different three three is also one <laughs> we are getting Wuhan Wuhan so let's use seven perfect right so seven was Ebola so we have two different sequence and we have the description and then their sequence right apologies for that very interesting that is simple now let's move on to the other stuff you can also do right so we have already gotten their record here we can now do our analysis of it so i just come back to this place then let's see that if this is going to be something different so let's bring it down here so if st dot checkbox let's use a checkbox we can use a button but okay let's make it a button right button then i'll pass in my dot plot right for dot plot then i'll go with st dot right so comparing we're comparing the same this particular sequence right so the first maybe 100 nucleotides because we can't compare all, all of them it's going to take time that's format first 100 nucleotides of the two sequences so there's two sequences right then i'll pass in the particular number here right that the person select so something very simple something very nice so we have to create another option to be able to help us get it so i can just come back to the same place that we have set a range so let's set a range here so let's go to custom range or custom limit you can call it custom limit or limit then from here i'll just go to with st dot number input then from here i'll specify to so set a limit or set or select max number of nucleotides right Then I can just give a, li a limit so that the person has in the seed that so 10 is a minimum, the maximum is 200, then the default is 50. Right, perfect. So, whatever the person select there is going to be added, then I can just pass in. So, I just shown it here. Right, so I'll pass it here. So let's come back to this place, put in this option, custom limit. Then we are done. Right, we are done with it in a very simple format. Perfect. So, let's save it and see. I save it now if i go with the dot plot it's going to bring the number there so comparing it must show us that so comparing the first 15 nucleotide as we have selected above perfect now let's add our dot plot so we already created a dot plot here which is self-explanatory we had a delta we have an m we have a mid matrix we have a plot matrix and we have created a custom dot plot that you did math plot lip to help us make it nicer right so that is the same thing so we'll be passing in we will pass in the two sequence then it's going to create a matrix for us and generate our dot plot so i come back down here to our dot plot then we can now 
plot it so it's going to be my dot plot x and i pass in my first sequence and my second sequence so it's going to be my dna sequence so we had our dna sequence one and sequence two right so it's sequence one and i'm going to go with zero to the custom limit the next one is going to be dna sequence two then from zero to the custom limit right so we need to compare them equally then now that is it so for for me to allow the plot to come what i've done so far is not going to come you're not going to see the plot even if i click on dot plot it's not going to generate the plot right but for the plot to come i have to just go with the st dot pi plot because we are using my plot lib so st dot pi plot then voila to come so let's save it and see what you have done so far so if i go with dot plot comparing the plot it's going to generate it behind the scene so it's going to give us our plot in a very nice format taking some time comparing ebola voila right so everything is working as expected so if i check it out <laughs> there's no correlation between them at all if i change the sequence this was number seven right this was number seven let's change it to something closer so let's go with let's say number 10 i'm not sure what number 10 is but let's check it out mm -hmm. number 10 is the same thing right so in this case because they're the same if i click on dot plot it's going to create a horizontal line for us right to perfect so so that is great giving us a diagonal line very well because they're the same very interesting very nice that is how to build this simple app so you have seen how to build everything from scratch using site streamlight or streamlight anyhow you call it so this is a basic idea so let me bring myself here so this is here right so the most important thing is and to recap is that we imported streamlight as st then we imported this particular package to help us work with it right so this one was not even used right then we also need use it bio details to help us convert it to to create our at et content and our gt gc content as well as uh, our several plots right and then this is for visualization and this is a simple plot to help us with our dot plots that we had and then from here we created a simple main function that gives us the option of selecting two main options which is for the intro the dna sequence and then the dot plot right very interesting and then for the intro it is something that you can do it's not that difficult we also created a simple option of receiving a file at the person select right through a dog boss then we will do the nucleotide frequency we could change the color of the plot that we had if i click on this plot here we could change the particular plot right to the color that we wanted right very interesting so if it was blood i can change from blood to something else using the beta color picker so in the future it may be st color picker right in the future maybe right so it's something very simple and then later on we did a lot of transcription translation we converted them to the right names using need bio utils to suck to help us through that so thank you for watching this long tutorial i hope you have learned something from this thank you for watching and see you in the next session in case you have any question or contribution you can put inside the comment section below and please don't forget to subscribe and check the link below for some interesting materials to help you master machine learning and then python jesus says